Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Arcade 1UP Couchcade. Now, I actually had no plans to pick this up, and you know, it's been a while since we've taken a look at anything Arcade 1UP on the channel. And really, it comes down to space. When they started initially releasing their arcade cabinets, I got my hands on a few of them and kind of loaded my office down, but since then I've donated a bunch of them to my local Boys and Girls Club. And to tell you the truth, I had no plans on picking this up. I actually didn't even know it existed until I took a trip to my local Target and noticed they had a few of these on the clearance shelf and I really couldn't beat the price. Now, uh, straight off the bat, retail on these is a bit high for what you're getting, but if you can pick this up on clearance for around 50 bucks, then yeah, it would be worth getting. But basically, what we have here is 10 preloaded arcade games. They're fully licensed, and we've got a wireless control stick. So uh, this kind of sits on your lap. It's got kind of a cushion on the bottom of it. And yeah, I think it's actually a pretty cool idea. Now, if you're into these arcade games, then something like this might be worth picking up if it's on clearance. But like I mentioned, retail is a bit overpriced for what we're getting here. And I completely understand that, you know, they're licensing these games out and they got to pay them. But inside of the box, you're going to get some user manuals. We'll also get the control stick itself. This is wireless and it takes four AA batteries. I actually thought it was rechargeable. We've also got an HDMI cable and a micro USB cable to power up the console itself. And on here, it does look like we have a micro SD card slot. So by the end, we're going to see if we can add some games here, but I'm not sure if we can. I haven't done any research on this just yet. Overall, I'm a huge Pac-Man fan, just like a lot of other people out there. And I do like the design. It's fake wood, but it does look pretty good. I think they did a really great job on the vinyl here. And on the bottom, like I mentioned, it's got kind of a cushion with that Pac-Man design. It's like a bean bag. So this can actually just sit right on your lap because it is wireless. And it looks like it kind of straps on here with some Velcro. We've got a little LED indicator and another micro USB input. I guess we could power this from the wall if we needed to. But uh, over here on this side is our battery compartment. It takes four AAA batteries. And I really did think that this was also gonna be rechargeable, but you do have to add your own batteries here. But all the magic really happens on the console itself. And as you can see, this is the Pac-Man Collection Edition. Round back, we've got micro USB to power the unit up, full-size HDMI, and micro SD. Not sure if this is for firmware updates or if there's any kind of hack that we can use just yet, but by the end of the video, we will test out what's out there now. And I also want to do a teardown because I'm actually interested to see what CPU this is using. But let's go ahead and test this thing out. I've got HDMI and power plugged in. I've already turned the unit on. It takes a second to boot up. There we have it. So we've got that arcade one-up intro. And it should bring us right to the game selection menu. And there it is. So we've got 10 arcade games to choose from here. They're fully licensed. Pac-Man, Pac-Mania, Mappy, New Rally Axe, Rolling Thunder, Dig Dug 2, Galaga 88, Galaxian, and Galaga. So we've got a pretty decent collection of arcade games, and all of these are going to work great with our stick layout here. And uh, we can have one or two players, and we'll kind of pass this stick off while you're sitting on the couch. And right on the front of the HDMI console itself, we've got this little button here. It'll bring us into the menu for each game, and this is going to be different for each one. Some of these will have like border settings, some of them don't. With some of them, you can change the difficulty and how many lives you start with. But yeah, it's pretty cool to see a couple settings here that we can mess around with with each of these games. So overall, I do like the interface. Very easy to navigate. So, you know, if you wanted your kids to play this, it shouldn't be an issue. Gives us the controller layout for each game when we start it up. And we'll press uh, one player here to get right into it. And just judging by the bezels, I think this is running at about 720p. Not bad at all for these arcade games, but the borders could be a bit sharper. I think uh, they could have used a higher resolution image for each of these. It's not horrible, but it's not really sharp like it should be. So for the selection of arcade games we have here, it really doesn't take a lot to run these at full speed. Uh, the joystick isn't bad at all. I can uh, move through here, no problem definitely get away from these ghosts pretty easily but yeah I mean it doesn't need a ton of power so they could have used a very low CPU here to kind of uh, you know save cost we will do a teardown by the end but yeah Pac-Man totally playable here I want to move over to a couple more and just check them out but uh, let's see if we can get through this real quick I doubt it no I'm gonna get got right now but to exit a game, what we're going to do here is hold that first player button down for five seconds. It'll exit the game. If you hold the two player button down for five seconds, it'll actually reset the game. 
but it brings us right back into the menu and we can play something out. So we're going to go with Mappy here. Next up, we've got Dig Dug 2. Was never a huge fan of number two, always loved number one, but we also have that one to choose from here. And yeah, this plays great. I love me some new Rally X, so I definitely had to test it out. It's actually really easy to navigate with the stick they chose to use here. And finally here for the testing, Galaga 88. I didn't go through all of the games, but yeah, I mean, everything that I tested so far works fine. Uh, we've got more than enough power with this little CPU to run each one of these. And the stick combo with the buttons isn't bad. It's not Sanwa or Hap or anything like that, but it works out great for these older arcade games. So obviously, since we have a micro SD card slot, the big hope would be that we could add games to this pretty easily. Now, I've done a little bit of research, and there is a YouTuber who goes by the name Retro Zoltan. I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel in the description. Now, he's actually managed to get games on their other consoles that are basically the same, but they've got wireless controllers. I believe he did it with the Mega Man version, and he was actually able to add GBA, NES, and even Sega CD. So seeing that video, I got really excited, but uh, turns out he's actually got his hands on one of these couch cades, and unfortunately, the method he used to get games on the other consoles will not work on this. I think they've blocked it. So unfortunately, at the time of making this video, I personally haven't found any way to get games on this, but if you do know a method, let me know in the comments below. Now, the last thing I wanted to do here was just see what CPU this is running. In case in the future we do get a hack for this, we kind of got an idea of what can run on this. And obviously, since Retro Zoltan got Sega CD running on the other one, I'm pretty sure that's what we'd be able to go up to on this. But uh, then again, you got to think about it. We've got this arcade stick here, and I personally haven't found a way to pair any other controller with this console yet. But after pulling the tin shield off, it looks like we've got a rock chip RK3032. Now, unfortunately, I can't find a data sheet or a proper data sheet on this, but I'm leaning towards a dual core Cortex A9 CPU at around one gigahertz with a Mali 400 GPU. I mean, not a super powerful unit, this was actually released in about 2018, and it does seem like Sega CD would probably be the highest that we could go on something like this if we could get a mod for this little unit. But taking a look at the retail price of the Couchcade, it's coming in at around $150 everywhere I've seen, and I think they did list this on QVC for around $130. You could pick up a more powerful, cheaper Android TV box for around $25, and the CPU in that would run circles around this RK3032. So overall, I do think it's a pretty cool idea, and if you've got people over all the time, it'd be nice to have something like this that you can kind of pass around, or if you've got kids and you don't want to play in Fortnite, I'd say playing Pac-Man would be your best bet. But at $150, I personally don't think it's worth it. Now, as a lot of us already know, Walmart does clearance out a lot of this arcade one-up stuff. Uh, I believe it was the end of 2021, I saw some $50 cabs at my local Walmart, and I was really thinking about picking at least one more up, but it's just really a matter of having the room for another arcade cabinet in the office. And I just kind of ended up just leaving it there. But, you know, these are a lot smaller. You can store these under your coffee table. And if you can find these clearance for around 50 to 60 bucks, then it might be a cool little thing to pick up. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you know of a mod for this specific unit, please let me know in the comments below. It'd be really cool to add some more arcade games here or Game Boy Advance, I could definitely get away with playing some GBA games with just this arcade stick and really not have an issue with it. There was hundreds and hundreds of games released, so I could definitely find something that would be fun to play with this stick. If you're interested in learning a little more about the Couchcade, I'll leave some links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.